Hi, I'm Karen. I'm here with Amy. We're with the youth media team at Lergus Forum. We're here with the members of the panel discussion. Can you introduce yourselves? I can start. I'm Christina Yanku. Uh, I'm a youth leader, youth facilitator and trainer on a freelance basis, but for today I came to represent NYCI because I'm a project participant in several projects of them, namely Making Links and a strategic partnership um, uh, called Transforming Hate Speech in Youth Settings and also in Young Voices have been involved. Hi folks, my name is Conor Galvin, I'm uh, currently at University College Dublin and uh, heavily involved in teacher education, teacher formation, um, I'm also a researcher. Um, today I've come along to, to actually run a workshop. Um, the, the, the whole area of working, getting teachers to work together across Europe and across boundaries is something that's fascinated me for a long time um, and that's what I'll be talking about as the, the day goes on. Yeah, my name is Kieran Brosnan. I'm uh, the assistant principal in Holy Family Senior School in Port Leash, which is a primary school. And I'm here today because I've had a lot of experience um, in the school education sector of Erasmus Plus. I'm Dean Murray. I come from Ballymun in Dublin. I'm a community and youth studies student in Minute University. Today I'm here with the National Youth Council of Ireland as I'm a Young Voices participant. Hello there, uh, my name is Tony Gudens. I work for the Salto Inclusion and Diversity Resource Centre. So that's a resource centre uh, for the European Youth Programme, so Erasmus+, Plus, but also Solidarity Corps. And what we do is we support national agencies, but also youth organisations to include young people with fewer opportunities in their uh, international projects. And uh, this afternoon I'll be presenting a workshop uh, on the cookbook on inclusion that we developed. So all kind of uh, recipes or ways to uh, do it, how to make it uh, happen so that the projects uh, are for everyone and not only the, the, the well-off kids. Uh. And so there are a few things which came up during this morning's session. So if, if, if it's okay with you, uh, we might discuss some of them. Um, so the first one is the rise of hate speech and what we can do to counteract it. <clears throat> if, if you're okay, I would like to say some words about it. Uh, well, first of all, I, I can speak as a project participant in in, uh, in the Erasmus Plus project that I was uh, involved in with NYCI. Uh, that is called transforming uh, youth speech, uh, <laughs> hate speech in uh, youth settings. So what this project was all about. So it was a strategic partnership between uh, Peace Institute Finland, NYCI, uh, Ireland, and, uh, and uh, Ljubljana Pride in Slovenia. So what this project uh, tried to, to work on is to see what are the needs uh, behind uh, those, those young people that are producing hate. So it's like trying to shift a bit the paradigm, not only educating them, okay, racism is bad or discrimination is bad. Mm -hmm. Let's see what are you missing there, what uh, need is not met in order to actually, you know, transform this in a compassionate way. So try to look at the, the, the perpetrator, where is he or she coming from and what are the needs behind. So this is from the point of view of the project, like, briefly uh, it was all about and we produced a toolkit and also a training for youth workers uh, on a bigger picture I would say that uh, one thing that I, I think it's really bur a burning issue right now is try to actually produce the hate, sp hate speech uh, policy or hate, hate crime le uh, legislation as well so in this way, they connect, you know, on a bigger level. So all the projects on inclusion or tackling or transforming hate speech in a way or another should resonate on a bigger, bigger scale as well. So we can we can work on education on different level, local, uh, regional, and European level, of course. But but trying to go, you know, from 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 down to up. 
you know. So I think legislation should be, and a lot of consultation, of course. And it's going towards this because mm -hmm. NR had a big campaign of, of uh, trying to legislate hate crime, not hate speech, because with hate speech it's a bit more, you know, it has a lot of nuances and it's really hard to, you know, to actually, like, legislate for hate speech legislation, you know. It's hate crime, I think it would be the first thing that is, uh, would be burning. So. Sorry. I think one of the issues behind hate speech is the anonymity, so you, you can hide easily behind social media or also because you don't really know the other person, it's an anonymous kind of group or a, it's an amalgam. Um, so I think the, um, uh, the European programs have a big potential to yeah. break those uh, prejudices and to bring people together because then once you know someone from LGBT uh, um, background or uh, from a minority background, uh, different, uh, then it is more difficult to, to generalize and have your hate speech against this, this big anonymous group uh, so you actually know some people of that group so I, th I think uh, that's why we try to bring people together with these uh, European programs yeah. um, The second theme is the need to engage with people from diverse backgrounds and cultures so. Yeah I, I answered that first because that's how I got involved in Erasmus Plus first is because in our school we had a big explosion if you like of our population mainly from children from migrant backgrounds and as a school, then we wanted to know how we were going to include these children in the school. And that's what we used Erasmus Plus for. Because we wanted to get to the stage where children weren't being defined by their, their colour or their name, for example. That there was this perception if a child had a particular non-Irish name that he must be from a particular country. Or if a child um, was, had a particular colour of skin that he must be from a particular country, which we now obviously know is not true. And that we want to get to the stage where children aren't being defined by those, or by their abilities either. Um, we, we have a unit in our school for children with autism and that there wouldn't be a perception that if you have autism then you mustn't you know that there might be a perception about the sort of person you are so we want to I suppose in our school is get beyond that and that where we actually celebrate diverse cultures rather than see it as a challenge Yeah just to chase that a little bit I think I agree absolutely with Kieran what, what you said there and Tony what you what, what, you know, so much hinges on those moments where you sit, or, sit, sit beside or sit across the table from someone and have that conversation. And a lot of um, the, the true changes, the deep changes that take place, I think, in, in uh, not just young people, but people right across the spectrum, they have their initiation, they have their, their start in those moments, in those conversations. And if we don't find ways of making those happen, then hate speech is going to continue and it is very difficult to you know to, to, to call out in a way hate crimes you can call out much yeah. more clearly and and, and uh, we will end up in, a, in a, a legislation scenario I think eventually but I think it's much more important that we work right across our own small parts of the world to make them better and safer places for for people to to have those conversations and to start those little journeys that personal and, and, and otherwise that take us into interesting places I think it's also just a right I mean everybody is paying European taxes or at some stage will <laughs> hopefully or, or probably so why can they not benefit then from European programs so and then it doesn't matter if you're in a wheelchair or if you're LGBT or if you're uh, from a minority uh, uh, ethnic group um, so everybody has a right so it's maybe not a need, it's a right even, I would say. Um, the third team, theme is uh, the need to provide young people like ourselves with a voice. Yeah, I think that's really important, and especially at the moment with like, climate change and stuff. Like it's yeah. seeing where if young people are listening to change can happen. And so, so I've been really lucky in that I've been involved at a European level with NYCI. And we've, I went to Bulgaria and Austria in 2018 to European youth conferences and while here you're sitting around tables with people from across Europe and with ministers and you're having a direct say on European strategies. So we, last year was, there was 11 youth goals developed and it was on different topics from like mental health to 
climate change involved in rural youth and stuff but like it was young people's voice being heard being put into these goals and then those goals are put into an actual governmental strategy that's put out across Europe so now youth organisations are implementing the voice of young people and you probably they're not fully aware probably that what they're acting on is the actual voice of young people. Yeah, and I suppose for me, in our primary school, we still see that there is a place for a voice for young people. When I say young people, in our school, our, our eldest children will be about 13 years of age. But for the last four or five years, we have had a student's council in our school, made up of the children in the senior classes. So we have a student's council of about 13 uh, children. But what we would be like to have is to actually have a meaningful uh, student's council. By that I mean that they're actually involved in decision making that concerns them. I may just remember one instance, for example, when we went to our new school back in 2016, that we as teachers were trying to do our plan as to what would happen at break time in the yard. And we as teachers sat down and we decided these, this is what the children would do in the yard. And then when we met our students' council, their idea of what to go on in the yard was completely different <laughs> to what we as teachers had actually decided for them. And they had said, oh no, we, we don't want to do that. We don't like doing that. Not all children like to play soccer. What about the children who don't play sport? How about the children who just want to read? And we gave them the task of, well, can you, you design what should happen in the yard at break times? And they did. And they're the ones that actually run it. And so, at our, so yard duty for teachers can be a pain. But for us, it's actually a pleasure because we don't have any difficulties because the students come to themselves, have decided what activities go on. They consulted the children in their class and they're the ones that monitor and set up the activities. So we can actually see, you know, when, you actually, when children have a voice, when they have a say in their own education and say what's happening in their own school because we want to see the school as their school, not a school that um, I think it really adds to their own um, educational development as well. Yeah. yeah, actually, can I just say that I think you guys are a very good example of voice as well, and I've always thought that down the years, in, 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 the, in the sense that the youth media team is, a, is a, to my mind, a unique institution. It's, it's survived into you know, four, three generations almost at this stage. But the way that you raise questions, the way that you come to conferences like this, the way that you kind of go around and raise questions with groups of people like this. Um, I think that's important because you're making us think. It might not feel like that, but I think you're actually making us think quite deeply about things. And the fact that the, the fact that you got the red T-shirts is probably one reason why we're here. We mightn't have been so keen if it was someone from Lergos who wanted to do a focus group. <laughs> so, yeah, exactly. you know, like hearing yeah. the voice and, and being asked intelligent questions I think is, is profoundly important. Can I just interject something here? This is Pamela Brown here. I'm a mentor with the team. Just one of the things that I think is really important about the Lergus Forum and the voice is, Cara mentioned to me this morning that there's something different about the Lergus Forum. You there hear is. different voices. So we've gone to own team events up and down the country, but actually you hear a different voice. You hear bringing together people you know, from diverse cultures, backgrounds, like we have around this table is really important. And I think for us, we get something out of it as well. So... When uh, the final theme is the impact the impact that youth groups have had on some of you and the young people you work with. I suppose personally, like when I was in secondary school and stuff, I started out at a local level with youth work, and I'd be in a youth centre six days a week, and was there till like ten o'clock some nights. And teachers in school would be telling me to go study, but I was like. I don't want to do study I want to do the youth group because that's where I was actually learning stuff and then sure doing a PLC in Liberty's College I became involved with like NYCI and I went from just that local level to a national level but then I started to see all these opportunities and doors opening where I was getting involved with the likes of sporting.ie and having the same what they were doing Become, getting involved with Jigsaw and being part of youth mental health and changing youth mental health in Ireland. Doing stuff now like the US Embassy, meeting with the US Ambassador, meeting with NASA. It's like it's stuff that normal working class kids wouldn't dream of doing. And now I've experienced it, lived it, becoming a youth worker. And as a professional youth worker then it's like I'll be able to bring young people through that sort of journey where it's not all about skill and a real education can be within youth work. And maybe I can give an example of um, 
an Irish uh, guy, uh, a traveler, and because of whatever reason it was, he got in contact with uh, a youth worker and they presented, look, there's a